Hello, everybody. Welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging. Welcome back to The Good, The Mad, and The Unholy. Uh, this is the beginning of Arc 2, Episode 1. This is not Episode 5. Jeff is wrong on that. How dare you? How are we all doing tonight? Good, good. Opposed to I'm you alive. guys. Great time. Yeah. Uh, I do have a little bit of bookkeeping. I normally like to jump right into the episode, as you all know, uh, but I made a list of things that I need to talk about. Jeff, quit. It, it's not like that. It's not a joke. I promise. I don't <laughs> trust you at all, sir. I know you too well at this point. No, no, no. I, I got dice. Uh, so I've got this cool little box from Etsy, but inside, uh, look at these fancy dice from Norse Foundry. I had to show these off. These are actual uh, deer antler dice. How cool is that? Uh, I just got them. I'm breaking them in. Uh, our friend Eric from Norse Foundry has assured me that these will kill at least three players. Uh, that was his promise uh, or my money back. Mm -hmm. Oh, we might need to have a word with him now, might we? Oh, and by the way, if you too would like to buy some beautiful Norse Foundry dice and you would like a discount, you can use a lolly as a, as a promo code and get 10% off for... Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Ten percent. Did you intentionally do that? Did you intentionally set that up? Uh partly, but I, I really did just want to show off these Such dice because I love them so much. Such a professional. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh yeah, so dice. Uh new cast. So as you may notice, we have a couple new faces, uh, a couple old faces. Jeff will always be here because he has better internet than me. Uh it's unfortunate, but true. <laughs> uh we have Xtel. Uh, go ahead and wave there. Yep. And then Lung, uh, you all know him, but we don't like him. Uh, he was nice enough to show up. I'm joking. I love you, Lung. Uh, uh, it did beg the question. Uh, what are you laughing at, Jeff? Just an interesting series of events. It's just a <laughs> roller coaster of emotions with your introduction to Long there. I know. I know. Uh, it, it begs the question, though. I, I was thinking about this a lot today. Is this the same posse that we started with? It's like the ship of Theseus thought experiment. Jeff, what are you laughing at? Uh, it, the ship of Theseus, like if a ship is uh, repaired and replaced like board by board, uh, is it the same ship? I, I was thinking about that. Like it commonly known as the grandfather's axe. Your grandfather leaves you an axe after he passes away. You use it for a while. Uh, the haft breaks. You get it replaced. You use it a little bit longer. The blade breaks, you get that replaced. Is it the same axe that he gave you? Jeff, is it the same axe? I'm sorry, I wasn't really paying attention. Uh, yes. Emotionally, yeah. Anyways. yes. <laughs> Physically, no. Anyways, this is the philosophy posse. We'll just uh, say hi, <laughs> philosophy posse. Going. Hi, philosophy posse. I only get one one hi from the worst joke. Okay. <laughs> well thanks for joining us tonight uh we'll see you next time <laughs> yep 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 god that was such a long uh that's why i call them the aristocrats i just wanted to show off my dice mm -hmm. uh yes so arc two uh quick recap of arc one if you haven't seen it yet what are you doing here i mean don't leave but you should be watching it too at the same time uh arc one our posse uh, went out to uh, help some homesteaders, found out that the homestead was cursed. Uh, there was likely a cult behind it. There was some sort of esoteric supernatural curse on the homestead, and it followed even one of the homesteaders that survived. There was a cultist in town trying to kill her. We are picking up with our uh, current posse uh, being sent out to the Caldwell Ranch. Uh, the cultist you interrogated said he worked for the Caldwells and that he, uh, that they were in, up to nefarious deeds. Ignatius Freeman, uh, one of the town council members of our small town of Perseverance, uh, asked Purdy if he would go and check out the Caldwell Ranch uh, make contact with them, see if there's anything suspicious going on, because Purdy has a bit of expertise with the supernatural. Of course, not wanting Purdy to go alone, uh, he uh, was willing to hire two uh, 
I don't want to say gun hands, but bodyguards, let's say, valets that were Sue the Smiles Escher and John Blade. Uh, Both of them uh, have a bit of reputation for being rough and tumble. Sue is new to the area. John Blade, you've been in Perseverance for a while. You've built up a reputation, uh, especially in uh, the bare knuckle boxing community. Uh, You're known as a very tough guy. But we are going to start with Long. Vince Summers, can you give us a quick description of your character? Yeah, Vince Summers is a tall man, mid-20s, spiky hair, brown hair, brown eyes. His attire at first is light brown coat, some black trousers. Something that stands out about him is his giant red scarf. That's the first thing you'll see. And he's bit of a bounty hunter. Vint, you wake up in the middle of the desert, the sun scorching down upon you. You look down, and at first you see that red scarf, but then you realize there's much more red coming from your stomach. There are three large gashes across your torso, your intestines, are hanging out of your body. What are you doing? Uh, help. S- somebody. You call out. Looking around, you see there is no one around you. Above, you see that there are vultures circling. One of them with a bell around its neck, gently clinging as it circles lower and lower. I look around for anything familiar. My my gun, my, my belongings start crawling towards it. You look around. You drive a wagon through this route. You know the territory. Looking around, you don't see your wagon. You don't see any belongings. You don't see anything of note until you turn and you see a bronze cauldron what it it looks to be a giant cauldron at at least five feet wide it's about 50 yards from you with whatever strength i have i start dragging myself towards it you drag and with each uh foot you're fighting so hard your intestines begin pouring out and falling behind you You're dragging them along. They start soaking up the dirt and the dust and you keep going towards this cauldron. Eventually you reach it. You see that it's got a circle of Celtic knots along the top and the bottom. It's got four legs. The thing, uh, like I said, it's probably about five foot diameter, probably about four foot tall. And you hear a melodic voice coming from it. It's speaking to you in a language that you've never heard before. It's almost a little sing-song. And while you have no idea what the words are, for some reason, you understand what it's saying. It's calling to you. It's offering you life. Yeah, in my desperate grasp that whatever life I can get here, I'll just ask for help. Help me. I'll do anything. You say that, and blood begins to bubble over the side of this cauldron as if there's an unending fountain, and it begins to wash into the desert, and it starts to wash over you as well. Out of this blood comes a gnarled arm that's thin, frail, and mummified, and it reaches towards you, reaching out for you. I'll reach out forward, Sam, to try and grab it. You grab the hand. You hear a bell out of nowhere. And that is where we are ending that. We cut to the three members of our posse. You are traveling through the desert. Uh, This is somewhat familiar land for... All three of you, uh, Purdy and Sula, you just traveled this about a week ago. 
uh, not too long ago, except you were going south instead of north. You're following the old wagon trail north. You were given very good directions on how to get to Caldwell Ranch. You, you feel like you'll find it fairly well. It'll take about a day or so for you to reach Caldwell land, but it'll take at least three days to reach their actual uh, house where they have their bunks in their barn. They own a huge swath of acreage in this territory. The first day or two goes fairly uneventfully. Uh, Sula, how would you be managing to put up with Purdy's talking this whole time? Uh, Sula doesn't necessarily like to talk much. So someone else being the person that does the talking is actually just fine with her because no one is expecting anything of her. John, oftentimes people travel, uh, they sing while they travel to pass the time. Would there be any song that you would be singing or are you not a musical man? John's humming a tune a little bit, something that he heard when he was a child. Just a little lullaby. Mm. Mm. And uh, Purdy. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, he just does that for a little while, and then he stops. Does it on and off every couple hours, probably. Purdy, how much are you talking to your companions, and how much are you talking to your faithful mule? Oh well. Uh... I would be talking quite a bit, telling story after story, especially if Sula's not talking and John's got a tendency to, to hum a tune. I'll I'll tell them the stories of uh, my home. I'll tell them of my my cousin Purdy, who was uh well, he was a he was a bare knuckle gouger in the Appalachian Appalachian Hills and that was a thing or two. I myself am not much of a pugilist, of course. Uh, but I tell you, he could uh, he could swing something fierce. So I'll talk about stories like that, and I'll uh, touch base with Sula from time to time, and you know, take the temperature, see how upset she still is with me, how much she still blames me for the loss of her traveling companion, that sort of thing. A, f- a fair amount. Well, that's... Never mind, I'm going to go back to talking to John. He, uh, <laughs> he's even way friendlier. <laughs> But I will, <laughs> if it's all right with you, Balladeer, at least to the point when we're able to start, you know, proper play and stuff. The whole time I will be trying to take advantage of my storytelling uh, ability. So every time we camp, every time we're you know, traveling nearby, I'll, I'll be telling a story or two. Yeah. Uh, you'll definitely be able to tell uh, lots of stories as you're going to have three days together. Uh, John Sula riding your horses, Purdy on his cart with his mule. The first day goes mostly uneventfully. It's a very well-traveled road. You see a few passerbyers. Uh, Nothing uh, too important happens. You camp. The next day, you have to go off-road. You have lots of trails and paths to follow. Uh, The Caldwells are uh, ranchers with quite a big herd of cattle. Uh, and they've pushed cattle through this area as well. So it's not too difficult uh, to travel through. It, it's been flattened and well-traveled as well, just not as much as the road. About halfway through that second day, you hear that familiar bell of the vulture overhead. Is this something John would be familiar with, or is it just Sula and I? Uh, John, how much traveling have you done outside of Perseverance, or did you mostly stay in town? I mostly stayed in town, just uh, got in a fight here and there. Just nothing, nothing too crazy, just drank and gambled a little bit. So then this town would be fairly unfamiliar to you? Yep, I reckon I don't know much about what's going on out here. So on our uh, last trip, we... Uh came across some uh, quite unnerving sights and uh, experiences. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Purdy and myself have developed a 
bit of a uh, twitch when we hear that uh, that their sound. It tends to be a bell connected to a vulture. And as I'm sure you know, vultures uh, generally do not uh, bring good tidings with them. And these vultures with bells especially. Who put the bell on them? That is a question we have not yet answered. It is a subject of some dispute, but uh, last time we were here not too long ago, Sula and I returning from a, well, from an atrocious evening. We found ourselves a, a fella out here. Well, the vultures had their way with them, poking away and eating and such. And that damn bell was ringing. So, uh, we might want to keep a Keep a close eye on things. Make sure there's no more poor sons of bitches out here that might have suffered a similar fate. I mean, you ever thought about just shooting them down? I felt like that'd be the easiest way to get rid of them. Well, that's easy for some. Uh, my hands, they're not so good for shooting and aiming. I feel another story coming on. And I will tell one. Uh, so Steven, I rolled my storytelling test, uh, okay. 25 under 50. So, uh, both Sula and John get a temporary, uh, grit point, uh, for the next 24 hours. Ooh, nice. All right. There you guys go. Yeah. You'll see all sorts of bites in my hand, by the way, scars and such. Looks like, uh, fangs from snakes and You'll probably be able to piece that together, especially when you look in the back of the back of my cart and hear the the rattling and the moving around in the boxes that I carry. But Sula, looking at this particular belt buzzard, you see that it's circling in a lower pattern than most vultures that are just flying looking for prey, and you see it begin to slowly descend. Through the haze of the, the midday sun, you notice something that you didn't notice before, probably half mile to a mile up. There is a covered wagon that has been overturned. Should we check that out? Might yes. be some goodies in there. Yeah, possibly some folks who might need aid as well. Nose animal or two. Let's take a closer look. Moving closer, you're able to see that uh, the wagon is on its side. Uh, the The cloth covering it is in tatters, but mostly intact. Uh, the frame has been broken down and it's kind of sunken. The frame that holds the cloth up. Uh, the wagon is facing your direction, uh, so you can see that there was uh, two spots for horses. One horse is dead. Uh, it has been mauled and gnawed upon. There are several vultures there going at the remains. The other horse seems to be missing. You also see the body of what appears to be a human wearing a red scarf. Does a... Does that body appear to be breathing? You'd have to get closer to look at it. Right now, you're probably a tenth of a mile away. No. Oh, well, there's a fellow over there. We, yeah. I guess I should go take a look, see if, he, uh, see if he's uh, expired. If anybody wants to give me a might bit of protection along the way. If he's got money on him, take it. Well... Naturally, you know, they don't want it to go to waste. Waste not, want not. Uh, Purdy, are you going up by yourself then? I will wait to see if one of these fine, gruff, much more powerful individuals will come with me. No, you got it. All uh, right. Sula is pretty good with first aid, so she'll... Uh... Mm-hmm. Right up and take a peek, but we'll uh, have her uh, hand on one of her pistols. Pretty all right. He'll he'll hop on down, 
you know, follow Sula out there and got his little medicine bag ready to go. Going that extra tenth of a mile, uh, you see that some of the vultures do come over and start pecking on the human body as well as the the horse. Mm. The human body hasn't been devoured as much as the other one. It hasn't been uh, gnawed upon, chewed upon, torn at the same way. However, the body's not moving, leading you to think that the person most likely is dead. Uh, Sue is going to come up and just, you know, kind of kick the bottom of the boot and just you know, give a kick there. Ah, uh, you are uh, still with us there, sir? Just kick. When you get close enough to kick it, you see that there are three gashes across his torso. Intestines are just splayed everywhere. Uh, the person is on their back. Uh, the vultures have been chewing at the intestines. No response from kicking it. Didn't we just see this whole intestine thing last uh, body when we were on our way into Perseverance? Well, I mean, that's what these uh, these folk do. Get the entrails and things out. Vultures come up. Oh, I sort of hope for his sake that he is not with us anymore, but I'll kind of uh, circle around the body and kind of go up to the face and Smack the side of the face. You, uh, I hope not, but are you still, uh, are you with us? Smack in his face. Like, you see that there is no color in his face whatsoever. Uh, no response. His body's entered a stage of rigor mortis as well, where he's very stiff. Yeah. Well, I guess we should do what Mr. Blade says and maybe check his person for some identifying items. Perhaps we can give his kin uh, some sense of closure. And I'll uh, I'll start going through uh, the items of the wagon itself, the upturned cart, see if there's anything of use. Are you going through the body first or the cart? Uh, I was assuming Sula was going to go through the body because she's right yeah. there. And then we'll Purdy, the Purdy will go through After the I've wagon. After I've kicked the feet and smacked the face, I will then check pockets. Yes, they have stabbed it a few times just to be sure, <laughs> just to make... Yeah, but Purdy will go for the wagon. Uh, John, did I ask you for a physical description yet? What you look like? Uh, not yet. Um, <clears throat> John is a uh, uh, rather tall. He's about six two. Uh, uh, deep brown skin, um, with green eyes. Uh, he wears uh, the normal cowboy hat, and um, he has on a a, a long uh, trench coat that goes down to about his uh. Uh, halfway his shins um he wears uh surprisingly like if uh the three-piece suit without the jacket um underneath uh and he's got a, a pretty okay pair of cowboy boots and he's rather uh muscular as well how far are you staying from this are you still about a tenth of a mile away I, I, upon seeing them it's inspect the body and just kind of gather around and nothing happens, I, I move up as well. I, I come close and I go to the wagon. Long. You are in the desert by yourself. This cauldron is overflowing with blood. The hand reaches out to you. You reach for the hand, you clasp it. The blood is running down the hand onto you. And this mummified hand that you're holding onto begins to become reinvigorated. It rehydrates and it grows until it is a man's arm. It pulls you up to a a half standing position. And out of this cauldron rises the figure of John Blade completely naked, covered in blood. He's pulling you up. This is a man that you are familiar with. You've seen this man before, but we'll get into this in a second. Because he rises, he pulls you up onto your feet, and you come to in the desert, and you see a woman going through your pockets. Well, howdy, partner. Do I know you? 
Sula, you hear this uh, long as you're saying this, you look at her going through your pockets and you see that your intestines are still spread all over this desert. I hope you didn't do this to me because. Sula is just going to jump back and she already had kind of one hand on one of her pistols and she is just going to pull the pistol out of the holster and just point it at you. What you? Whoa, whoa, I don't look that bad, do I? You're, and she's just going to yell that he's, he ain't dead. You would have gotten about halfway to the back of this wagon when you would have heard all this. Uh, John, you would have been able to hear this from a tenth of a mile away, too. So, uh, Purdy, at the sound of that, what kind of turn? Like, okay, okay, well, uh, I mean, you point that gun at him, you're going to finish the job, aren't you? Come on, calm down. Uh, uh, he, uh, sir, you, you're... Yeah. Half y'all insides are outside of you. How are you still breathing? Uh, I don't know. I, I think John Blade knows the answer. He's, he's helped me a bunch. Long, uh, you feel very stiff, dehydrated, but also invigorated. You feel like if you stretched a little bit, you could run a marathon right now, no problem. Could you help me up? I seem to be laying here. Uh, yeah. uh, I mean, you, you want to grab those intestines with one of your hands? Otherwise, the intestines are going to stay on the ground and you're going to be uh, upright. Oh, these things. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to scoop them back in. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, you can start pulling on them uh, and pulling them in like a, a rope or a lasso and you start shoving them back into place. Uh they do spill out again, but for the most part, you're able to push them back in. You don't have, you have like three massive lacerations across your torso, which makes it hard to keep them in there. I can stitch that up for you there, partner. Oh, you, Just get your doctor. Yeah, could you help me? Close enough. Hey, uh, hey, Blade, I think we might have a friend of yours up here. Friend of my- He says your name. Is that Johnny? I ain't seen Johnny in third. Wait, hold on. I'm coming. No, I don't know this fellow. Uh, After a moment, you do realize that you do know this fellow. It has been a long time since you've seen him, and you only met him on one short occasion. But why don't you tell us how you saved his life? Well, I saw this fellow here uh, banging off the side of a cliff. Uh... Scooped him up and gave him some food. Uh, Vint, how did you find yourself on that side of the cliff? I was uh, chasing after this beautiful Mustang. I just just had to have her. But she took a turn. I wasn't expecting. Caught myself dangling off the cliff. Well, uh, all right. How'd you find yourself here with, with your intestines spilling out? I feel like you should be dead. If, if am I not? Am I wrong here? Oh, I, I feel great, invigorated a bit, but, but no, I was. You, you, you were dead, right? Was I dead? I, I, I don't remember anything. Just passed out. Son, why don't you sit on down? I mean, go ahead and stitch that up, live or dead, whatever it might be. Those intestines popping out is going to be an inconvenience, is what it'll be. And uh, while I'm doing that, I'm looking for, I'm basically kind of trying to inspect him really closely. Look for any signs of like, signs of symbols, signs of tattoos, markings. Kind of trying to basically, and then and rack my brain and, you know, about people coming back from the dead you know yep yep uh before you get to what you're really driving at, i'm not going to give you the role yet uh you're going to be able to uh tear some of his remaining shirt 
Uh, there's not much of the tatters left to hold it together, but you rip it apart to start uh, getting ready to stitch. You try to like replace organs as best you can. And as you're going through your bag, looking for a uh, needle and thread, you hear from the wagon. Uh, and the whole wagon begins to shake. His wagon? His wagon, yes. Uh, your mule and the horses are still a ways back. Yeah. What you got in that wagon over there? Oh, it's just transporting supplies, food. I mean, my horses might be there. Yeah, what kind of supplies? Food supplies. Y'all hear that? Did Everyone that- heard it. Sure do. Okay. Yeah, uh, afraid to tell you, friend, you, one of your horses is dead and the other one is gone. I'm, I'm afraid it ate your horse. This wagon begins to shake even more violently. All right. Sula's going to take out her second pistol, so she's going to have both of her pistols out as she goes off to kind of the left to kind of make kind of a bit of a wide berth around this wagon. Yeah, you start making a, a wide turn around there and a creature erupts from this canvas inside of the wagon, a massive Gila monster, the size of like a bull just breaks out. The wagon uh, gets pushed several feet away and it's covered in this cloth and frame as it's writhing and rashing. And it's going to be headed towards John Purdy and Vint as Sula has started to circle around. Everyone is going to need to roll initiative. Hey, Yay! I remember how to do that. All right, so rolling initiative is going to be a straight D10 plus your initiative bonus. That is on the first page on the bottom right. Just a D10? Just a D10. All righty. Got an eight. A six. Got a 12. Oh. I got a nine. Nine total. All right, so that is a 12 for John. You are going to be first. And then a 9 for Purdy. Uh, Sula, you said a 6? That's great. And what did what did you say, Long? I got an 8. You are muted. All right, you are all going before this Gila monster because I rolled horribly. John, you are going first. This creature is the size of a bull. It's got massive jaws. It's hissing at you. Its tongue is coming out. You see this saliva, uh, the thick drops falling out of its mouth. What are you doing? Uh, John, Just uh, you see him kind of smile, and he just goes, oh, this is going to be fun. And he takes off his hat. And he puts it uh, on on our disemboweled friend on the ground here. And he goes up to it and he does like an arm reload. And he just goes up to it and smacks it with his fists. Yes, the Mission Impossible reload. I love it. Yeah. All right. So uh, that is a fisticuffs roll. Uh, it's going to be... Uh, so John and Vint are new to our posse. We're going to do a quick overview of the rules. Um, if you have jacks... You can use spend a jack to give yourself plus 10% to a roll. Um, yeah. If you don't have jacks, it's a straight roll. You roll D100. The goal is to get under uh, your skilled call. Uh, so for fisticuffs, uh, what do you have for fisticuffs? A 79. All right, so you're going to roll a, a D100. If you get under a 79, it's going to be a pass. It's a 59. 59, perfect. So you are earning two jacks on that. And you have two uh, choices for these jacks. You can use those jacks to do extra damage, or you can save those jacks, and on future rolls, you can spend them to make it easier on you. I will will save those jacks this time around. All right. So it's handy if you have a D6 available to keep track of your jacks. You can only have up to six jacks. It's called floating them down the river to save them. So you can have up to six jacks floated down the river. 
Uh, you currently have two now. Uh, if you take a skill any time in the future for this session, uh, you can spend those jacks to get an extra 20% on them. Uh, the jacks reset every session, so it's better to use them so you don't lose them. Got it. Uh, all right, so what is your damage bonus? My damage bonus, let me, let me scroll down here and make sure I know it. I have a three plus three to damage. All right, and I believe for just a straight punch, you just do your damage bonus. Let me double check this real quick. Uh, for my papers, we'll say yes for now. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna say you're doing three vitality damage right now to this creature. Alrighty. Uh, and I should have explained also the way turns work is you get three actions, you get a primary, a partial, and a prompt. A prompt action is like drawing a gun, uh, yelling something, anything very fast. A partial is like a D&D bonus action where it's something that you can uh, do quickly, but it still takes more time than just yelling. And then a primary is like an attack, something like that. Your punching would be a primary action. Got it. Uh, so you still have a partial and a prompt. Uh, would you like to be moving around? Would you just want to move... You did move a little bit closer to it, but you could keep moving if you'd like. Yeah, I, I would like to move toward, uh, to the other side of where I see Sula coming from. So um, try to flank it, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Sula was going wide around the wagon. You're going to be ending up going the opposite direction to get between the, the monster and the wagon. Uh, there's still some space there as it burst out, but you're going to be on opposite sides of it. Why don't you uh, go ahead and describe how you're punching this thing and moving around it? Uh, like I said, he does the he does the arm reload, and then when he walked up to it, he just did a, a an uppercut, um, followed by a, a quick jab, and then he just uh, not stepping, just kind of um, you know boxer steps uh, to behind it, and he's getting ready again to to keep punching, floating like a butterfly. I love it. Uh, okay, that brings us to Purdy. Uh, what is Father Purdy doing here? Uh, Purdy will see this monstrosity erupt from the, the wagon. He's next to Vint. He sees Sula moving around, and he sees his new friend Blade charging in. And he will call out, and he will say, Fear not the serpent in the waste. Fear not whether they have legs or not, for they cannot harm you here. They were cast out of paradise. They are cast out because they are ineffectual cretins. Strike it down quickly so that we might uncover the true mystery. And I'm going to attempt to do inspiring words, uh, which is an expression check for me. I need a 64. Uh, I rolled an 8. Uh, man, my rolling in this game is just absurd. Uh, <laughs> you always roll low. I, so many jacks I, all the time. It's insane. Um, imagine if I could do damage. Uh, let's see. <laughs> so I get, you know, so that's five jacks, but because I have um, books, traditions, and words, uh, every time I have a successful expression check, I get an extra jack. So I just filled up on jacks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give basically two to each person. Uh, so what that means is everyone on their next skill check, you get 10%. So I'm giving I'm giving like two of my jacks to Vint, two of them to Sula, two of them to John. I don't, I'm not saving any for myself. So everyone, you have a plus 10% on your next action. Yeah. All right. That is your primary. Would you like to be doing something with your partial or prompt? That is my full. It takes a full round action for me. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yep, full round so action. Thank you for my entire turn. Me. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, so that brings us to Vint. Here in the real world, you do still have your guns on you. You still have most of your equipment. What are you doing? Uh, you're still on the ground. Your intestines are still not sealed in, but you can move around just fine. Like I said, you feel invigorated. Yeah, I'll, maybe I'll just stay on the ground so my intestines don't fall back out. And I'll just either like take aim, do some sort of covering fire down there. All right. Uh, so that'll be your primary action. 
Uh, and because you're prone, I'll give you an extra 10%. Uh, if you're using a pistol, it'll be short arms. If you're using a rifle, it'll be long arms. Got a Spencer Carbine long rifle here. And you get an extra 10 from Purdy as well. 10. All right, so that okay. I'm going to say you get an extra 10 for being prone as well, so that's an extra 20. Okay, my long arms is 74, so it'll be 94. Yes, it will. Uh, and also, we got some uh, audience jacks. Thanks to Ashley. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, four of those that you can all tap into whenever you'd like. Uh, you can only use one audience jack per... Oh, no, we said two audience jacks per roll. Okay. I rolled a 78, which will pass. 78. Uh, that is a pass, and you uh, have an extra jack that you can use for damage, or you can float it down the river. Use for damage here. All right, so go ahead and roll your damage uh, for your rifle. Uh, which I believe is a 3d8 for the Spencer. Yeah, 3d8. All right, so 3d8, and then you're going to get an extra damage for the jack. So uh, 3d8 plus one. I rolled a 16, so plus one, 17. 17. Uh, describe how you would inflict the killing blow here. Okay. I grab my Spencer rifle make sure it's loaded and ready light up my sights with the monster start remembering that I was traveling this trail and this heathen monster jumped me out of nowhere tore my guts out with a thought in my mind I imagine this bullet coming out of my rifle straight down between its eyes taking it out and it strikes true it should be a killing blow. It, it goes right through its eyes. You see its skull kind of cave in. Blood comes out the other side. Well, this thing is still thrashing and biting, and it is not going down. Whether this is pure reflex or not, uh, it, it is still biting and attacking you all. That was your primary action. Would you like to do another quick action to go with that? Taking a look at what I can do with that. Uh, maybe just a little shout out. <sighs> Struck it good. Should be dead any moment now. It should be. And yet it keeps going. Sula, what are you doing? So uh, everyone would have seen me moving over to the left side uh, but um, would not necessarily have uh, heard that movement um, especially with all the ruckus happening yeah and she is going to uh, fire at this uh, monster with assuming both pistols? She... yes yes uh, I... would you like to describe what it looks like and sounds like here um let me double check something here really quick um no worries no worries if i remember correctly and correct me if i'm wrong uh the sound of the gunshot is heard non-existent non-existent that's right okay so you will have seen me going in this direction not necessarily heard anything. I've got the guns out and fire. You would expect a sound, but you hear no sound. Are you like yelling or anything like that as you're shooting? Absolutely. Um, you know, especially when it's sort of going in their direction. Um, I'm definitely. Uh... So she's got both these pistols out. She's unloading with both mm -hmm. of them. Not a single gunshot is heard from her. You see her mouth open. Uh, you see uh, that she is obviously yelling, and yet you cannot hear anything that she is saying. How'd you hit? I let's see. So we've got a plus ten from Purdy, which gives mm -hmm. me I needed to hit a seventy-four, and I rolled a seventy-two. So no jacks for me, but at oh, least I succeeded. just barely. But you got it. You're welcome. All right, so go ahead and roll damage for both of those. All right, so that's 1d6 per 
Uh, that's a two. Yeah, Jeff, when I play a support character, whenever I give someone a boost and they kill something, I count it as my kill. So, I... uh, so it's a two damage on the first shot and a six damage on the second shot. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, you're getting solid hits into the torso here. Okay. Uh, and I'm assuming they're... it's running away from me. So I'm kind of getting like the back end. Yeah, you're probably closer to the side or the back, so you're okay. getting right into the chunk, probably near the the back haunches. Okay. Uh, you're getting solid hits. These should be putting this thing down, whether it's just enraged or not. It is still going, uh, and it is its turn. Can I'm sorry. I... Did you want to move or do a? You have I a would partial say, and a still. can I? I'll lower one of the pistols, and I okay. will. Uh, kind of repeat myself and I will yell this thing just ain't going down I don't understand what is with this thing and then she'll pull the other pistol back up again yeah sounds good Uh, so that is the only noise you hear from Sula for her entire turn this creature is rushing towards uh, I'm going to roll one two is John uh, three four is Purdy five six is Vint This creature lunges forward and it begins biting. Its slobber is flying all over. Uh, it, it is attacking, trying to do a bite attack with a 20 to hit on Vint. Vint, right now you have two options. You can uh, take the hit or you can try to dodge block or defend yourself and that would mean that you lose your next turn oh I can dodge even though it's like a melee yes you can try to dodge right now uh, despite it biting at you I I would say you probably at a minus 10% because you're prone but you can Hmm. try to roll away Uh, but if you try to dodge or defend in some way you will lose your next turn okay Uh, I'll try and just roll away here get out of this path all right, so give me a dodge roll. All right. Oh, I have a 35. Uh, remember, you have audience jacks that you can use, and I think you earned a couple jacks of your own that you can use for extra percentage as well. Yeah, I got one, but I used it for extra damage, so I have none. Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, so you can use up to two audience jacks right now if you'd like. Oh, just roll a roll. Let's see. 32 passes. Pass. All right. So let me look this up real quick. Uh, with a dodge. I forgot how dodging works. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I have it up if you want. Damage, damage, damage. It's uh, if the defender equals or exceeds the number of jets. Scored. All right, we're going to say that you completely uh, missed the bite. I'm not sure if that's exactly rules as written, but I've forgotten. Sorry, I got uh, it. Up. So you're going to. I got it up, Steve. You got if it? You want. Yeah, I didn't realize I had muted my Zoom. Uh, if the defender equals or exceeds the number of jacks scored by the attacker, they negate the attack. If the attacker exceeds the defender's jacks scored, the excess is added to that damage. I had no All jacks. All right. Uh, you had no jacks. Uh, so unfortunately, it will still get the bite off on you. Uh, it didn't roll very well, though. It only got one jack. So it is going to do 1d8 plus 3. That is a 1. All right, so it's doing 4 vitality damage to you. Uh, you have two bars of damage uh, on the bottom of that first page. The vitality fills up from left to right. You can just put X's in each box. Uh, and lucidity fills up from right to left. When you start getting into different categories, like for Vitality, you took four damage, so you would be whooped right now. You are going to get minus five on every check uh, from now on until that heals. Uh, That compounds with Lucidity. So if you became unnerved and whooped at the same time, you'd be at minus 10 instead of minus five for each. Okay. If for any reason those two tracks cross over each other, bad things happen. So try not to let that happen. Uh, but you are into minus five for whooped right now. And 
there is some sort of venom in this Gila monster that begins to course through your veins. You are going to lose one vitality per round until a successful first aid or medicine call treats the wound. But that is the entire first turn of the Gila monster. That brings us back to John. No, no, no. Don't you walk away from me. Um, and John is going to stalk forward. Um, actually, you let me know if I can do this or not. John uh, is going to run. Um, and when he gets within uh, his long jump distance, so to speak, of the of the, of the monster, I want to um, essentially just barrel into it. I want to jump and <laughs> double punch it. Double punch it. Yeah. Uh, I am a very big fan of the rule of cool. So, yes, we're going to try this. Um, <laughs> I want an acrobatics or an athletics check to jump onto this thing. All right, we're going to go with athletics. Uh, uh, and I get the the one jack from, or was it one or two? You get plus 10% from Purdy. Okay, cool. Yep. So I'm looking for an eight. Okay, that's a five. That's a, a five. five. And I had All a, right, and what did you need? Uh, with the... With the one jack, it was an 80. All right. So you're actually, you gained seven jacks. You can only have a max of six. Uh, so you're going to refill your jacks here uh, yeah. as you jump onto this thing. And go ahead and give me the fist to cuffs attack here. All right. Um, and is it possible to use all six of those jacks for damage this time around? Uh, you can't use them for damage. You can use them right now to boost your percentage for fist to cuffs. Okay. Whatever you use for damage, it has to be on that specific roll. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, that is a thirty-eight. Uh, I needed a seventy-nine. All right. So that's an extra uh, what four jacks on that? And I'll use forty uh, percent one of those on demise. for more damage. Uh, your damage bonus was three, right? Yes, indeed. So, uh, all right. So you're using doing seven damage right now. That's massive for melee. Uh, why don't you describe what just happened here? Uh, yeah, again, John just goes, no, 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 don't you go away from me. And he just books it as fast as he can. And you see him leap. And then he just double, double punches this, uh, the, the monster in the back. Uh, and when he lands, uh, he, uh, does another quick one, uh, as he crouches deep and comes up, uh, into what would be his like gut on the side. <laughs> Uh, and then and that area is already there. that area has already been weakened by multiple pistol shots. So you're punching and you're just kind of uh, hitting the weak spots and there's just blood and scales flying all over the place here. Beautiful. He's, I love he that. He just stands and he goes, come on, fight me now, fight me. And that's, uh, that's what <laughs> I do. That's my turn. <laughs> all right, Purdy, you are up. This thing's still not taken care of, huh? Okay. This thing has taken enough damage that it should have died twice over, and yet somehow it is still standing. Purdy will grow greatly suspicious at such a thing. He will bellow out a different kind of scripture than all of you are familiar. He carries a book. I've mentioned this in prior episodes. He carries a book that, too... To the onlookers, to the uninitiated, looks like a Bible. And perhaps it is, it's just Purdy's own. But he holds it aloft and he shouts in it half English, half tongues, half something from the hills of Appalachia. And he says, Serpent of dust, you have come into the presence of a handler of serpents. I will not stand here while you attempt to inject your venom into those under my protection. You will run now, or you shall be smote. And I'm going to attempt to use the word, uh, which is a new all right, all right. I took, uh, which is a theology call. Also very good at that. I'm going to burn, just in case, because I want to get some extra damage, I'm going to burn one of the audience ones uh, to get this up. Okay. So that means, in total, I am looking okay. to roll a 89. I'm only doing this because I want extra jacks. Uh, so, okay. Jeff likes stealing audience jacks and turning them into personal jacks. 
I I am just trying to show my appreciation to the audience. I greatly that, appreciate. That seems to be the plan. Uh, that's a fifty-one. So uh, fifty-one needed a thirty. Uh, needed an, eight, an eighty-nine. So that should be three jacks. And because that is theology call, I actually get an extra jack because of my books. And you have a knack for it. Yeah. So that's four. So what I will then do is I will do. Uh, let's see. It's one d four lucidity damage. Uh, plus, uh, if I want to use the whatever, so go ahead and all right, that's a three on the on the D four plus four. Uh, so I'm gonna use all the all, all of my jacks. So that's seven points of lucidity damage. Seven Adeline's points of brain. lucidity damage. Yes. Uh, how do you think a lizard would react to seven points of lucidity damage? My words and my voice carries with it a frequency that. Perhaps humans are accustomed to. I have dealt with many a beast, and I would imagine their head, their brains, small though they might be, shall fear. They shall fear the sounds coming from me, as we might fear the roar of a lion, and it will tremble. I feel like you really should be a pastor in Appalachia. I don't know. Uh, it's so yes. much fun. So... Uh, it's taking seven lucidity. This does have multiple tracks. Uh, some creatures share lucidity and vitality. This one has separate. Uh, so it is taking that damage. Um, we're going to say that it recognizes you as a serpent snake lizard handler. It Master. will not attack you on its next round because of that. Uh, it might attack John or Vint uh, or good. Sula, depending on what she does. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Mm. Uh, Vint, you are up. You are still on the ground, and you have been bitten by this thing. Uh, your intestines have been spilled out once again, but you ha- got a good shot on it before. It's still right up on you. Uh, it- it's literally standing over you right now. What are you doing? So I used dodge last round. That means I have no action here. Uh, oh, yes, you did dodge, so you do not have an action. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have even asked you. So dodge is so the one thing yeah. I was confused about with dodge is dodge is a reaction and you can you can actually do more than one reaction on your turn but each cumulative one take it, it takes a cumulative minus 20 penalty. So does does doing dodge actually eat up the next action or is it just the the cumulative penalty from from doing it over and over again? You know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. I probably misread that wrong. Uh, you get a penalty to their skill. Uh, ch- ch- character receives one reaction similar to a primary may perform additional defensive so it's because it says it's a reaction is similar to a primary action so with little time so reactions are quick movements that occur with little time to perform and oh and where they did do, i they, get that from? they do no it's right here replace primary actions yeah it's right there you're right okay okay uh, so you can still do a prompt or a partial right now. Uh, so you can move, you can do something quick like draw, replace a holster, yell out something, but you cannot attack right now. Hmm. I can move, I think. That should be yes, you can. Partial. Yeah. Okay. I will... uh, so you're still prone on the ground. This thing's right on top of you, but you can start like crawling. Uh, and if you get enough distance, you can uh, start to stand and run away. Okay, I'll do what I can. Just crawl out from under this. Just get away as uh, best I can. You turn over and you start crawling, uh, and it's slow going because your intestines begin to start pouring out. You, you push them back in. You keep crawling. You only have one hand to crawl as you're keeping them in, but you do get further away from this monster. It's no longer on top of you, and it's not within striking distance. It would have to move to get to you. Uh, anything else you'd like to do? Oh, that's all I got. Okay. Uh, that brings us to Sula. So Sula wants to... Take a look around for, hopefully this isn't going to get anybody killed. Um, But last arc, there was some importance to finding the things with the Celtic symbols and destroying those, not necessarily the thing you thought you were fighting. So since uh, Sula discovered that last time with the Hornets, 
allergic to them as she is, uh, she wants to try to learn from that and look around for some sort of Celtic I am, knot. I'm such a, or another. a mean balladeer that I've made you all not trust anything that's happening anymore. I'm sorry for that. I don't think you uh, Go ahead and do an investigation. Uh, it would be observation, uh, most likely, for this. All right, observation. Uh, let's see. I'm going to take one of the audience jacks which puts us down to two to make this a 68 to give myself a little bit of a better chance. And I rolled a 13. So that means I get some uh, jacks. Now look who's stealing audience jacks. Good for you. All right. So with that success, what do I see? All right. So you are going through the wagon. Uh, you're just ripping through. Uh, the canvas is mostly on the Gila monster. Uh, it, it's mostly fallen off, but it's away from the wagon. You start ransacking it, just tearing open boxes and crates. Uh, most of this has been ruined, whether it's been chewed on, uh, spit uh, has uh, soured it, or the creature has just destroyed it by sitting on it. Uh, there's not much salvageable here. Looking at the wagon itself, you don't find any sort of occult symbols whatsoever. Uh, you're looking on both sides. You don't see any sort of totems or anything like that that might be giving it any power. Unfortunately, there's not much that seems to be helpful in this fight. Damn. Uh, that was a waste of my damn time. And so she's going to get pistols back out and be ready to shoot next turn if needed. Yeah, and it is the Gila monster's turn. Uh, and it will be not going after uh, Purdy. So it'll be either Vint or John. It's going after John. Uh, you are on top of it and behind it. Uh, are you still on top of it or did you fall back off after you punched yeah, it? Yeah, I just, yeah, I came off and I just stood there, just ready for it. All right. And it turns around with lightning speed and it uh, brings a claw around to slash at you. It will. Would you like to try and take a dodge or a block action here? Nope, I just take it. That is a success with one jack. Uh, and it will slash at you. Uh, you're going to avoid most of its venom. Wow, this D8 keeps rolling ones. Come on, Eric. What's what's going on, Eric? <laughs> we're, we're, we're good with that. Well we're done, Eric. All right. <laughs> Superlative product. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is uh, four vitality damage happening to you, John. Yeah. Uh, but you don't have to worry about the venom here. And as this monster is thrashing, it seems like this damage that you all have caused, it begins to finally settle in. And it, it collapses for a moment. And then it gets back up and it begins slashing at you again, John. But you had that moment to kind of back away and it can't get at you again. And it, it takes a couple steps towards you and it collapses again before it gains a final surge of energy and it, it jumps up and lunges at you, but it's slow and sluggish at this point and you're easily able to sidestep it. And it just lands in front of you with a thud and a cloud of dust coming up. And this creature is now lifeless. Out of character from a mechanical perspective. Uh, that was a very good thought, Melissa. I, I, I feel bad that I'm tricking you guys so much. Uh, the Gila monster has uh, the beyond death ability that it can survive a couple rounds after taking enough damage to kill it. So it was just a, a final surge of adrenaline that was keeping this thing going. And you guys now, you would be able to see, a lot of you have experience with Supernatural. You would be able to understand that this wasn't something that kept it like, it wasn't undead or anything like that. It was just in its final throes of life. Can I uh, tend to vent as I... I was right next to him when it uh, bit and injected that venom. Yes, and Vint, you would have taken one more uh, vitality uh, point uh, as that venom surged through you before Purdy would be able to get to you. Got it. Uh, Purdy, I'm going to need first aid or medicine from you. I will gladly roll a medicine. And to ensure this is a success, I will I'll take one of them and their points of, uh, of the audience participation. One might yeah. say, and that was the last one, I believe, right? Uh, oh, jeez. Uh, Tool to Twitch just tossed us one. Oh, two, there we go. Thanks, Tool two. to Twitch. Yeah. We are at three now. It's, uh, it's a 16 under 60. 
No, it's a uh, success with four jacks. And Blade, right. you t- took some damage too, did you not? Yep, I'm all right. I was tis t- t- but a flesh wound. All right, I can uh, I can tend some first aid if needed, but uh, uh, if you would be so inclined, I appreciate it. All right. Never turn down free healthcare. <laughs> I will. Uh, I would like to be successful, right. so I'm going to take an audience uh, we'll, for this. We're going to call this. You, you don't need to take an audience for this. We're going to oh. call it a narrative success because the way healing works in this game is that first aid and medicine is generally used to remove conditions, things like that. You can't actually regain vitality from first aid and medicine. Oh, so what I you'd see. be doing right now is you'd be stitching him up. You'd be cleaning him up. He's not going to get an infection or anything like that. It's still worth doing, but you're going to have an automatic success. So for uh, vitality damage, do you apply gumption before you take the damage? I'll just look at that. Uh, you do to the initial one. Uh, so when I did that four to you, you would uh, subtract your gumption. Okay. I had a gumption of four, so it would have been uh, no, no damage. Or is it grit? I always forget between gumption and grit. Grit's the expendable resource. So I think it's gumption. Gumption. Looks like gumption is like armor here. Yeah, I think it's yeah. gumption too. Uh, sorry, guys. We took two weeks off and my brain's a mess now. Uh, so yeah, you subtract your gumption from the initial, but with the venom, you did not get to one. subtract gumption yeah. from that. So would I also have subtracted my gumption? Yes, from that? you would have. I, I'm sorry, guys. I should have explained that to you since you I, two haven't done combat before. You're good. So that means technically I took no damage because my gumption is four. Oh, look at you, Mister Tough Guy. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, Damn it, Eric. I'm, why'd you make me roll totally one fine. so much? Uh, well, uh, just well kidding. Love Foundry. you, Norse Foundry. Uh, okay, so Purdy, uh, you were successful in yours. So, Vint, you are no longer taking that Venom damage. Uh, and we can also include uh, this action as you uh, stitching up his intestines and his torso as well. Uh, so, Vint, you are, like I said, you're stiff. You're feeling dehydrated but your intestines are in you. You're in one piece, mostly. Uh, There's probably a bit of dirt and gunk in there, but what can you do about that? Uh, And you're no longer taking poison. Uh, Venom, sorry. Uh, Sula, you were able to stitch up John. Uh, He's not going to get an infection or anything like that. Uh, And I think you were the only two that took damage, right? Yep. Yes. So you guys are in the, the middle of the desert, you're headed towards uh, the ranch and you find this dead man who's now back to life and there was a giant Gila monster that attacked you. How are you handling this? Uh, what are you feeling like right now? What are you doing? Some mighty fun work you got there. Let's stand up. I'm Vin Summers. Pleasure to meet you all. Mm, name's Purdy. It's nice to meet you. You guys headed uh, north at all? It looks like my wagon got messed up. What cardinal direction are we going in towards? Uh... Uh, he was headed north. Mm. You guys were headed northwest. Mm. Mm. Sort of. A little bit anyway. You ever heard of uh, the Caldwells before? Caldwells, maybe a rumor or two. You care uh, your chair, friend? Favor for a favor. Uh, go ahead. Whatever you want to share. It seems like uh, we got a, their cattle. It's, it's a bit weird. Not, not normal. I don't know how to explain it, but it's, it's all I've heard. What do you mean by weird? It seems like they just unlimited unlimited supply of them mm. well, that's curious you've seen them slaughter some sell them off yeah they do a bit of trade there and then they continue to have them huh they look they're just, sure they're just buying more I mean that's, yeah. that's what happens right that's fair or question. stealing stealing somebody else's cattle thieves hmm not that I'm a thief or anything. I'm just, I'm just saying. <clears throat> yeah. 
None of us are thieves, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we, we didn't, we were a bit interrupted in the discussion of your, uh, intestines being on the wrong side of your, uh, body there, but you are feeling well. You are fighting monsters. Yeah, I'm feeling quite well. This is a bit unsettling. A on the road. So, but, uh, man. it's... It's concerning because we uh we we saw an individual uh not that long ago in the desert that was uh laid out and his intestines were on the wrong side of his body, not unlike yours. And we uh commenced with burying him because we assumed, as it were, that he were dead. And uh you looking very much the same and uh now being alive is uh question making me question our uh our plan that we had with uh that other one there well i'm just glad you didn't bury me like that sucker that would have been the next uh next thing i was gonna do well to be fair miss smiles we did take the the body back with us to town and he had more than ample time to reanimate as our new friend vent here has done well that does uh Ease my mind a bit. Either. Yeah, calm down, Bessie. Calm down. It's okay. As you are talking, uh, Vint, you notice behind Sula that your faithful horse Pockets has become to has started trotting towards you. Oh, Pockets! Is that you? you came back for me. Uh, it, it comes up uh, and nuzzles you a bit. Uh, you being such a good uh, you are always in tune with your horses. You've always taken such good care of them uh, that you get the feeling that it was just staying away while danger was present. What happened to your sister Daisy? Oh, oh she didn't make it. Oh, okay. So I'm just like whispering with her. <laughs> uh, bit solemn. But uh, what do you guys say? Can I join you? Make useful this, this rifle I got here. Well, uh, Mr. Vint, uh, you mentioned you had some knowledge of the Colwells. I'm just curious how you came across that knowledge. You I work for them. Deal in, no, I deal in the markets a bit. Trade. I, I've heard word from merchants. You have any love for them at all? Love for them? No. The only love I have is for my mother. Well, I would, I would hope any good boy would. Uh, I do love my mama as well, wherever she may be. But uh, where we're headed, it's uh, the work we have to do is not uh, of, a, of a pretty sort. The Caldwells are under suspicion for uh, a number of unsavory crimes. We aim to bring them to justice. One or another. Criminals, then. Well, nothing different for me. Bounty hunter myself. Lock of a few. Are you now? You know our friend Mr. Blade here. Ah, uh, Johnny Blade. Do a quick grasp of his end. This man saved my life. Yep. I sure did. And don't you forget it, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Bounty Hunter, sir. Then he comes back and does it again. Man. Uh, I'm still baffled that you are alive uh, after having your intestines on the outside. Um, but uh, if it's any sort of benefit to anybody here and I, uh, from my experience with this person here, he seems to be a mighty fine gentleman, so I wouldn't mind him tagging along. A personal recommendation goes a long way uh, out in these parts. How could we turn down such an endorsement? That oh. sounds great. Let's get back to where we started as I go up to Sula, grab her hand. 
You got something in mind? I'd take a coin out of her pocket when she was digging into mine. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I do apologize. I uh, did think that you had uh, gone on to better places and thought that uh, your uh, items were for dividing amongst the three of us. So I will check my bags and make sure I didn't take anything else of yours. But uh, it might take a bit of work to get that uh, that wagon of yours uh, on the upright again. The wagon is destroyed. Uh, it would take several days of repair for any sort of semblance of getting it moving again. That's no good. We'll just leave it on the road. Are you uh, all okay to abandon what you uh, had in there? Was that for just some trade? It was for Fort Craig. They needed some food, but I'll just send another. I mean, how long we are? They probably already have, honestly. A couple days. All right. So uh, you go through, you salvage uh, what few supplies are left. There, there's probably a couple days worth of food left. Uh, not enough to be worth the extra trip to Fort Craig, which is uh, about four days travel north. Uh, you are all ready to continue heading west towards the Caldwells? Northwest. Indeed. Hey, uh, All right. real quick though, uh, Purdy has an ability to kind of identify true believers and those that doubt the faith. And what, 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 what basic, um, impression would Purdy be getting from the party? Out of curiosity, do we have any true believers amongst us? Uh, from me, you wouldn't get that feeling at non-believer. Duly noted. Uh, from John, uh, he doesn't uh, qu- uh, he doesn't disbelieve. Nor does he really believe. He's just kind of like it's a thing. Maybe I've seen some stuff. It's probably true. Maybe possibly. Ignatic. But also, it might not be. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. What about Miss Smiles? Uh trying to remember how I answered that last time. Uh, I believe that. Uh, you do not get any uh, believe in vibes off of so Okay, that will adjust the uh, the stories I tell. And Purdy is not one to proselytize. He will not try to win them over to the word. That is not how he behaves. So he will tell stories along the way of a different sort, biographical, if you will, historical in nature. But nonetheless, he has plenty of stories. Oh, I will be storytelling every <laughs> day to. Increase the the grittiness of the party. I love this posse. You guys are great. It's going to be awesome. Uh, You reform. uh, You gather what few supplies you can from the wagon. Uh, Vent, you're able to uh, salvage your saddle, your war bag, uh, so you can uh, saddle up pockets. Days, unfortunately. Interrupt. Sula would want yep. to fashion some sort of like a girdle type of a thing for uh, Vince intestines because it seems like they are uh, continuing to move and a horseback ride might not do too well with that. Yeah, so she's yeah. Looking to take He's some stitched, but you can definitely pull some <laughs> stitches. And smiles, are you uh, doubting my stitching quality? I have seen uh, the. Uh, Gallop of a good horse can uh, overcome even the most uh, deft of uh, sewing jobs as, on skin and otherwise. As fairly and, and diplomatically delivered, I understand. Yes, Sula, known for her diplomacy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, not so much. It probably would have been a like, yeah, maybe. I don't trust you. No, no, you're doing great, Melissa. I love it. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Uh, so Vint, you get bound up by layers of this canvas, uh, preferably the ones that aren't too bloody or covered in, uh, Gila monster venom. Uh, but there's still plenty of canvas to wrap around you and bind up so that those stitches will hold a little bit better. Good thinking, Sula. Well, it doesn't look good, but we'll have to do for now. 
you set out on the road again. Uh, road is probably a bit generous. It's the trail. You start heading west, northwest-ish. You start getting into very mountainous territory. You're, you're still in a very desert area, but it's a lot rockier, a lot more craggy. You're going in between the valleys, so you have to kind of take a winding route just to make it easier rather than climbing up and down, up and down. You continue going. The rest of the day ends uneventfully. You travel for another day, passes uneventfully. You're still going through these mountains. It's really slowed you down. The fourth day of traveling, you get up, you get your possessions, you saddle up, you start traveling. It takes a couple of hours, and then you see on the ridge a horseman who obviously spots you and begins spurring his horse away from you goes down over the ridge you have a feeling that you've been spotted by a lookout and you're getting close to caldwell territory well you've been on caldwell property but you're getting close to their actual house this should be continuing traveling sorry go ahead i know that's all he says he's like this should be interesting You continue traveling for another half hour or so before you see in the distance there is a group of riders galloping towards you. You see this cloud of dust. You probably have about 15 to 20 minutes before they reach you. Is there anything you guys would like to be doing? Probably a mute myself, but uh, that that day, uh, I just wanted to make sure to get my my storytelling roll off. so I was able to get a four to two success, uh, and uh, I used some of my personally stocked up uh, jacks, so to make sure that everybody in the party, other than myself, has an extra temporary point of grit for the next twenty four hours. So burn it, perfect. And there's so the whole day you have an extra yeah, three. And remember that there are things that you can spend grit on to get. You can spend it to get an extra ten percent on a call. You can spend it to give somebody else twenty percent. Uh, on a call, you can you spend it to get plus five initiative during the first round of a conflict. Um, you can spend two grit to gain an extra primary action. There's a bunch of these things on page 38, but like the grit's a nice resource to use. We, don't, we didn't really use it that much during the first act. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate that. <clears throat> yes, you're absolutely right on that list, and it is worth using. Uh, mm-hmm. You can spend it or you can burn it as well. Burning is permanent. Spending is temporary. So what would you guys like to be doing in the 20 minutes or so before this uh, group of writers come to you? I'd like, John is thinking of the best uh, a tactic here on how to approach this situation, whether or not um, we should um, be more hospitable towards these people or, or not. So he's, try- he's trying to figure out the best way to go about this. So we have some names. Uh, if you can cover me a bit here, Mr. Mr. Balladeer, we've got uh, Crooked Oscar, Sarah, Esther. We got Little Miss Rose, who might know some magic. Uh, I believe those are the names that we were given by Mr. Elijah Lundy, the fellow that we interrogated. Uh, I believe you are missing Bob and Marvin as well. Bob and Marvin, okay. All right. So I'll just point out that there are a few names uh, that we know as well. We don't know them personally, but we have been given their names as noticeable folk amongst the Caldwell clan. Uh, Whether- John, yep. you actually would know uh, both Bob and Marvin personally. Yeah. Uh, as they uh, occasionally come to Perseverance uh, in perform bare knuckle boxing so you have fought against uh, both of them and they're both fairly tough uh obviously you win most of your fights but they've both given you a run for your money before uh, the, the bob and bob and marvin they're, they're pretty good fighters so if i mean be careful if we're gonna this comes down to you know a little hand to hand so just how bad are these guys? 
Telling me like real criminals, or you're just labeling them as criminals. No, oh, they eat people. Yeah. They no, have, I'm kidding. They don't eat people. <laughs> they have consorted with demons of a of a significant variety. Allegedly. Demons, huh? They have some sort of bounty on their head, or? I do not believe they have an official bounty, but if we are able to prove their guilt in a inside of court, perhaps there might be a reward for it. Okay, a little bit of a extra work on this, but uh, Maldir, what exactly was our charge coming out here by Mister? Your Nations? charge was specifically to determine the veracity of Elijah's claims. Uh, obviously you can't send, uh, Marshall out to go and arrest them based on what one man who's obviously touched in the head says. So you specifically were sent out here to determine if there is any sort of illegal things happening. If they, it's not illegal to be in a cult, but if they are, you would be the one to be able to sniff that out, determine if they are doing illegal activities Basically, it's a recon mission to mm -hmm. determine what you can determine. Do we have any official and authority in this? None whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Sula kind of holds up her pistols and just says, I believe this gives us a little bit of authority. Puts her pistols back. Well, I would agree. I um, would agree. From what I understand from Mr. Elijah, there are a significant number of folk on the Caldwell land. I would imagine that they too have guns. Perhaps uh, we attract, what is the old phrase, attract more flies with uh, bees with honey. And, and I don't know, I'm not one for sayings. Anyhow, uh, we could uh, we could just be honest and forthright saying there has been a charge laid against you and we are here to suss out its veracity. Or... We could play a hand, a very dangerous hand, and try to uh, lie about who we are and what our intentions might be. I'm green with Bertie here. You would say, if you think they're cults or shabits, I'll become a couple of members ourselves. Not again. Maybe. Um... John's going to, as they're still approaching, John's just going to kind of look around and I'm, I'm trying to try to figure out like what's the best way to maneuver if we do have to have this ends in a combat. Um, I know this is kind of like open field here. Um, but yeah, so you're in a like, bit of a valley. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you wanted to try and go up to higher ground, that definitely would be an option. Both parties are visible to each other at this point, though. So if you split off, it you wouldn't be able to do so stealthily. Got it. Well, the bright side is that, you know, if it comes down to it, we usually have an all-out battle right here, and there's no way to hide, really. It uh, seems like a situation in which the folks that enjoy doing the talking should uh, do the talking, and uh, we can be here to... Uh, back up as required sounds good to me and um at that John's is gonna move his horse in himself back to behind um not like directly behind but kind of behind and to the side of a purdy well I, all right i have been known to be a, a mediator in certain parts of the world so I suppose I must dust off those skills once more. This is what Purdy lives for. It is. <laughs> I do, All however, right, so like move my trench coat to the side to reveal my my gun. Uh, it's not it's not the best shape, but you know it might get the job done. Maybe. All right, uh, so not, you uh, so you move a bit behind Purdy one, to let him one, be one the one, first impression. One, yep. I, Valadir, I would like to tap into another one of my peculiarities called wisdom. You are peculiar. Wisdom of the time, twice per session. When asked, the Valadir provides a warning and possible outcomes for an action. So my my so I'm just kind of if if my action is to. Um, 
is to just be forthright. We are here investigating a charge against the Caldwells. Uh, what might possible outcomes be for such an action? Uh, let me read this here. Uh, yeah, this fair. is peculiarity for wisdom uh, righteous of the tongue. T- wisdom of the time. Wisdom of, wisdom of the time. Here it is. That's a positive peculiarity, right? Indeed it is. So the alternate right, idea is that we, we say that we hear that there's a cult that we want to join. Plan A, plan B, plan C. Mm-hmm. You we know shoot and punch things. You know what to expect of others and how they will react to you. All right, so do what you just said. Provides a warning and possible outcome. Go ahead and give me one more time for what action uh, you're asking. Uh, I am curious as to how they might react to uh, uh, to just honesty. We are here investigating a charge on the Caldwell clan from a fella back in town, and we have been given authority of modest approach from Mr. Ignatius Freeman. Uh, you suspect they would react with aggressiveness and hostility but they would not be the ones to initiate that hostility if you're here to investigate most likely they would a warning and possible outcomes if you acted hostile they would have no problems meeting you with that same hostility and most it, likely they will match whatever you give them. Okay. So just me saying I apologize for like, you know, there's just a polite conversation. We are just dotting our I's or crossing our T's. Is that Balladeer in your estimation considered hostile? No, they're not going to like you being there, oh, but funny. they're not going to shoot you down unless you draw first. I don't know. Purdy's pretty likable. <laughs> Uh, Does that answer your question? No, 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 that was great. That was great. Yeah. And I'll I'll convey that to the group to, to kind of suss out how that affects our strategy here. Is this a place we're going to like big at all? Is it sort of like a town? You have been on their land for the last two days. Uh, However, where you're going, uh, Vint, you said you've done some trading with them. So you're going to know that their actual property is about four or five large buildings. Uh, couple bunkhouses, a couple barns, and then uh, their actual nice ranch house, uh, and then a corral, and then they own all of the land in the vicinity, but what they have personally is just a few buildings. They might recognize me. Maybe that'll work in our favor. Maybe we can just rest up in one of the buildings for a night. Say, you found me inside the road. We got beat up. Need a rest. It's fair enough. I'm Your sure it's true. Indeed. And if necessary, I'm sure I can conjure a, an elaborate fiction if necessary. All right. Uh, at this point, their group catches up with you. You see that there are three men and two women riding. All of them are armed. Uh, they all are wearing... Uh, rugged clothing. The men are all wearing uh, cloth gray coats that appear to be very worn. They all have bandoliers, lassos, the equipment that you would expect from both cattle drivers and outlaws. The one who's in the middle has a roundish head, very large eyes, very big smile, his hairline's receding. His hair is very poofy, but it's still very dark black. Uh, but his most defining feature is that his head is twisted and he's got burn scars around his neck. And it kind of forces him into a sneer every time he talks. And he is the one that talks first. You're on private property. I suggest you turn around and go. I am uh, very sorry to impose uh, 
Good man. Uh, I was hoping we might beg uh, your hospitality for an evening, if that would be possible. You can beg, but I ain't giving you nothing. Yeah, I understand that. We will, uh, of course, pay our way, if that is all right. You see, our traveling companion here uh, is new to our to our group, and we found him along the road severely injured. Uh, Vint, show him some of your scars there. That, uh, And I'll play it up a bit and reveal my coat. Oh, yeah. Guts hanging out my body. We very much would uh, like, like to find a, a safe place, maybe some water in which we can clean the wounds. Uh, we're, we're concerned a bit that uh, a return trip to Perseverance or another nearby uh, established uh, established town might be a little much for uh, for the stitching currently. Vint, you would recognize this character as Oscar. Uh, he, he's very hard to miss with that broken neck. Vint, you had yourself some trouble, but we ain't no hospital. Uh, I don't need a hospital for now. Come on, Oscar. You know me. I haven't done you wrong. Where's your wagon? Well, our wagon thing got wrecked. John Gee the monster. And who are these? And he spits. He kind of has to like twist his head the wrong way to spit away from himself. Who are these folk? <laughs> These kind, kind folk picked me up off the side of the road, carried me here. My name is, uh, is Father Purdy. I'm a humble shepherd of the Lord. We don't need no Lord either. Yeah. I suggest y'all turn around. Yeah. Yeah, if that's just a suggestion, and you're not outright suggesting that we, uh, now continue our conversation. Is there anything why perhaps we might be able to offer unto you that we might change your mind? Depends on what you're offering. Well, we uh, we have a handful of coin amongst us. We have some supplies that might be of use, perhaps. And there's always a future favor, of course. And labor, if there's anything you would like to put some of these young strong hands to. Oh, fuck it. Talk to Caldwell's. Come on, follow us. No sudden moves or we'll gun you down. Fair enough. Thank you, sir. He pulls his horse around. The rest of the uh, group that he's with uh, also pull their horses around, but they go a bit slower so they can kind of surround you guys and guide you in. Uh the next hour will still be uh, traveling along this road before you even see a hint of the Caldwell property. Uh, is there anything you'd like to be doing or talking about for this hour of travel? Shoot the shit with Oscar a bit. Be like, I knew I could rely on you, Oscar. How's that neck doing? You making fun? Uh, of course not. You better shut your trap then about my neck. Uh, I don't know what Jeff's is wording over there, but I was just saying, sure he is. He's totally making fun. Shoot him! But that's just that's, <laughs> that's Jeff saying that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so you guys continue traveling along. Uh, eventually, the uh, the valley begins to widen a little bit, and there's a flat spot, but it's uh, John and Sula. You two are fighters at heart. Uh, even Vint, you're a, a bounty hunter. Purdy, you can decide how much of this you would recognize. I'm a lover, not a this, fighter. This is a textbook defensible position. You have ridges surrounding you where it'd be very difficult for a group to come up uh, and attack unawares, especially if there's a, a lookout. There's only one real way in and out of this area. For cattle ranchers, this is a very unlikely spot to build. It would be very difficult to get giant herds of cattle through here. Uh, it looks like they don't actually have any herds in their property. They have a corral full of horses, but actual cattle, there aren't many to be seen. There's a few of them here and there, but for the most part, there's no big herd nearby, which means that the actual cattle drivers, the, the cowboys here, would have to travel quite a bit uh, to get to the herd, to move them around, to keep them grazing, things like that. 
So this would definitely seem like a bad position for a ranch, but if you were trying to defend a, a spot, this is a textbook perfect spot. There is a large white ranch house. Uh, has to have at least 10 bedrooms. It's two stories, and it has a wide wraparound porch that goes all the way around, painted white. The wood itself is costly enough to get out here, but then to paint it all white and decorate it the way it is, very extravagant for the area. Although back east, this would probably be uh, considered to be very poor taste. There is also a uh, dog truck cabin nearby, which a dog truck cabin is actually two cabins. They're both two stories, uh, and there's probably about 15 feet of space between these two cabins, but they share a roof so that you can go through between the cabins open air, but it allows a lot more ventilation between the rooms, things like that, and also keeps the area covered in case there's a rainstorm, dust. It keeps it cleaner in between those two cabins. This is very common for the area. You would know that most likely the cowboys bunk in one cabin and then they eat and uh, have like a, a table and recreation area in the other cabin. So you sleep in one, you eat in the other. There are two barns here. They're both very big barns. And then there's at least one uh, large shed. For most people, the shed would be the size of a house. Like it's about the size of the Barlet house. But uh, judging by the smell and the stench and streaks of blood, you're pretty sure that's a slaughterhouse. And then, of course, there's a very large corral with at least 30 or 40 horses in there. So this whole area, uh, there's a lot of wealth being shown here, but at the same time, it is still very practical. It It's not as ostentatious as it would be back east, but for the area, it's in, incredibly lavish. The, the group of cowboys drive you towards the house and you see a older man dressed in a white suit rocking in a chair. You can tell that he's got white hair pulled back. His suit is spotless. Purdy, as you get closer, you would recognize this. I don't know if you remember, but the last time you saw your good buddy Zeke, he looked exactly like this man. Okay. Uh, I would imagine those of you who uh, have a decent keen awareness would probably notice Purdy might be staring a bit at the man. He won't make anything too outlandish of a reaction. That is not Purdy's way. But he does... His easygoing you know, disposition seems slightly dimmed uh, as he stares off at this man. Does he react to me at all as if, if as I come riding on up? As you come riding up, uh, he does stand up out of the chair. Whether he reacts to you specifically, you can't quite tell. Uh, Oscar rides forward and he whispers something that's hard for you to hear. You make out something about staying the night. Uh, hospitality, something along those lines. And then the man uh, reaches out an arm, leans against the post of this uh, wraparound porch. Why? Wow. Can you believe this heat? It's just unbearable, ain't it? You are, uh, you are correct, sir. Uh, I am not sure if we've been acquainted. My name is Father Purdy. Why, it wouldn't be hard for one to believe that there isn't a shadow left in this whole land that hasn't been dispelled or revealed or illuminated. You, uh, you are not uh, incorrect, sir. Of course they'd be wrong, wouldn't they? Well. That very same sun scorches this whole earth, causes it to crack and rip and split. This whole land, it's infested with these venomous snakes, and they burrow into those cracks in the earth. And it wouldn't take but one wrong step. Well, you wouldn't have many steps after that. You understand what I'm telling you? I believe I understand the message, sir. But I will posit that 
venomous snakes are just like any other creature. They can be tamed and domesticated like a dog or, or a cat. They can do your will and tend to task if one has the constitution and the perseverance to train them. With that, he kind of gives a smile. I think you and I might get along just fine. Like old friends. Sure, like old friends. What are y'all doing on my property? Well, our friend uh, Vent here suffered a serious calamity on the road. A very gargantuan uh, gila monster nearly tore his his innards out. We have restitched him, patched him up something, but we are worried that a, a multi-day travel back to Perseverance or another town might be a little hard on that stitching. We could certainly use a, a day or more, perhaps, of your hospitality to allow him some respite before we return that trip. And why should I offer that hospitality? Hmm. Because we're old friends. And I'm just going to kind of grin at that and hope that's good enough. Give me a personality check. Uh, I would say convince. Oh, goodness. Oh, geez. Convince, huh? Um, as they're talking, John is yeah. looking at this um, this person here in front of us very closely, trying to like suss out any like subtle things he does if he looks a certain way sometimes when he says some things or I'm just trying to get a feel for this person are you trying to use your uh, peculiarity or your propensity uh, yes I am all right uh, this man while he seems very rich and pampered it doesn't take much looking at him to know that he is a hard man while he might have been enjoying the, the shade of his porch, you can still see that the sun has burnt wrinkles into him. His hands are calloused. He, he's worked in his life. Doesn't seem like the person to back down. John just smiles. Uh, do we have any audience die? die I can spend that temp grip here, grit here mm. for that. 20, I think it gives them the skill call. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I used extra two, 20 to Purdy. And I used a, I used the remainder of my personal, uh, my personal jacks. Um, so, and uh, I think we have, uh, one audience die left. If three audience dice, I'll use oh, one do. of them. That'll put yeah, me two old to thrown us uh, a couple. I'll take one. That'll put me all the way up to 64. Convince is not my forte, but I will nonetheless give it to try. Okay, I got it. 62. Yay. Look at that. 62. No jacks. You needed a 64? And I got a 62. All right. <laughs> By the skin of your teeth. Thank you, Vince. Nice job. <laughs> really needed that. <laughs> All right. Uh, you're, you you uh, call him an old friend, and he kind of gives you a little look. Uh, slight confusion, but he covers it real quick. Well, I am a civil gentleman. I wouldn't turn down anyone with, who is in need. Oscar, will you see about getting us some chairs for the porch? Maybe our guests can join us. Tell us what their real business is here. Oscar uh, turns around. A uh, little boy comes running up to you. Uh, he, he's got a little white terrier uh, nipping at his heels as he's running. He's probably 13 years old. Uh, he's got a giant head just completely out of proportion for the rest of his scrawny body and his face is covered in acne i can take your horses for y'all i promise i won't eat them or nothing well would you do that kind boy i'll hand him over <laughs> the reins of pockets she's a fine one now i'll take good care of her he'll uh, take the reins uh, sula john are you okay with this kid taking your horses uh no i i just I, I th think it might be best if I accompany you. Uh, Tacita is not known to uh, listen to anyone, me included. So it, it might be better if I uh, if I go with you. Uh, 
the the man on the porch will speak up. Now, little Petey's pretty good with the horses. I I don't think you got to worry nothing about him taking care of them. Oh, I I have no uh, no uh, underestimation of his skill uh, with them. I would not uh, do well if anything uh, came of a. Uh, swift kick from a tacita here and so sula's just gonna dismount um but she's got a firm grip on the reins of tacita the boy kind of looks a little disappointed but he uh accepts it the man esther oscar why don't you go with her show her where the stables are uh john are you willing to give over your horse john thinks for a second Wondering if he should accompany Sula, just, since these other two are going to go. Um, and he looks at Purdy and Vint, and he goes, I'll also go. Um, Bessie here is, uh, she's got a certain thing she likes being done when she's being put away, and uh, oh, she only responds to me doing it, so... Well, here I am offering hospitality after y'all impose on me, and you don't even trust my help. Oh, it's All not right, so be it. Uh, it's just that uh, Bessie is very particular about who handles her. Uh, no right. offense. Yeah, sure she is. All right. So we don't, uh, we don't expect this to be a, a full service accommodation. Uh, we do still have working arms and working legs, and we can uh, do our fair share. As uh, course, we are imposing on you. So we appreciate your even letting us be here for the moment. One of you give me a personality check. Uh, convince deception expression, whichever you feel fits this. Convince is you're trying to convince them of your intent. Deception is you're lying. Expression is like your body language trying to show your honesty. Uh, so either one of you can do this and give the other one. Of those. <laughs> so. All right. I guess you I was right. 38 in, in uh, we have two uh, audience jacks left if you would like to uh, make you and uh, I, I'll give you an extra 10% from Sula helping. All right. Uh, yeah, I will use I will use both of those jacks here. Uh, these two cool beans. So that is a oh, grip. I lost track. OK, next. OK, that passes us a 56. And with a three extra okay. jacks, there was there'd be a sixty-eight that I was looking for. So, yeah. so you got a jack back? I believe so. I mean, does it right. does it have to pass the total of what it is, or do the? Uh, it has count? to be ten under to get a jack. But if you're under, you pass. Okay. Yep. All right. So uh, you pass there. Uh, you can tell that uh, the the man on the porch kind of settles down. He he. Whether he believes you or not, he he doesn't fight you anymore about it. Uh, Oscar and Esther uh, do follow along with you, along with Petey, who took pockets. Uh, you, the mule, Henry, right? Henry is his name. That's correct. Uh, Henry is staying uh, on the wagon for now, the cart for now. Mm -hmm. uh, Petey says he'll come back and uh, uh, take care of it after he gets pockets all settled up. Much obliged. Uh, he runs off the little terrier. He, he says, come on, bandit, let's go. And the, the terrier starts chasing after. I'll turn to uh, our host and I'll say, I apologize. Young people have no manners. Well, I suppose I'm just a different breed. I could say a dying breed. I think you and I are of a similar mind. All right, so what was your name again? My name, Purdy, you'll do just fine. Purdy, and uh, it was Vint, wasn't it? I've seen you around here before. Vint Summers. Vint, why don't you all both grab a seat here? And uh, uh, Rosanna, Rosanna, he calls into the house. Uh, and there is a, a rather nice screen door, uh, which you don't see many screen doors in this area just because they're expensive. Uh, a woman comes out. Uh, she's a very small, uh, thin woman wearing a white floral dress, uh, and she's got the old uh, 
most women are wearing a bustle these days, but she's got the older fashion that goes all the way around, kind of giving her a bell shape. Uh, she's got very pale skin, blonde hair that's so blonde it's almost white, and you can see that she is very pregnant at this point, probably eight or nine months. She could be due in a couple weeks. Why, yes, honey, what can I do for you? This here is my my little Rose. Ain't she the prettiest thing you've ever seen? Rosanna, would you be so kind? Maybe uh, grab a couple pitchers of lemonade for our guests here. And you know what? Why don't you even uh, chip off some blocks of ice for them as well? Well, of course, dear. I'd be happy to. She runs back in, and you can see that she actually summons a few house servants to her. There, There's some maids that come up, and they start running around grabbing everything for her, and she disappears. All right, well, why don't we have a seat? We actually, uh, we get some ice shipped down from the north every year, and as long as we ration it, it lasts almost till late summer. I'm honored that you would choose to share some of it with us. Again, much obliged. Much obliged. Well, if you're so obliged, why don't you tell me what you're really doing here? Vent here seems to be holding up just fine. Well, that's true for now, but uh, even on the way over here, we've a little concerned a bit with whether or not those stitches will hold, and the nature of his injuries were, well, they were peculiar, were they not, Vint? You, uh... There's something else. I mean, my guts were pretty much hanging out. Don't know how I'm alive. Yeah. I don't lie to you, sir. We thought he was a dead man. Somehow he clung to life. Lord works in mysterious ways, I suppose. Pretty just is trying to say that to kind of get a gauge on how he reacts. Because he's curious if he's a true believer or if he has lost his faith. Let me roll a skill call here that you guys don't need to know what it's for. How dare you. All right. You see a little twitch when uh, you mention the Lord, and his, his smile just disappears for the slightest instant. No one would really catch it because he has it back that fast, but you did catch it. However, you do believe he is a true believer. Mm, yes uncertain as to what he believes in or whom but he is a man of faith i can just i can attest that very deep faith that's my my running commentary in my head of course yes but um i would like to use my second use of wisdom of the time as we are right up against it how might he react if i actually tell him the other reason we're here what's the danger now that he's taken all of our horses and we're a split party and we're both old men. You can tell that he's definitely putting up a facade. If you push him too far, he may not want to keep that facade, but he probably wants to keep it for a while. So you can push him a little bit. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, I will not. Um, I will not divulge the the fullness of uh, of our secondary mission. However, I will not outright lie about it. I will just embellish as to the the nature of Vince's injuries and the concern I, I have with him. And I will um, I will try to plant seeds as to the wondrous nature of his recovery, and beyond which I. I have a logical explanation for it, as if some power has overtaken him and has allowed him to come back from the edge of the abyss. That kind of language and rhetoric. Invent. What do you think brought you back from the edge? Uh, my grit. Maybe will live. But no, I have visions of something. As I was crawling around. Visions, you say? 
Of what? This hand reached out to me. A hand? The hand of God? God? I don't know if it was God, but whatever it was, it saved me. Well, saved by a hand. I haven't heard that one before. And here we'll go ahead and cut to uh, John and Sula. Uh, the whole time you guys are walking your horses over to the corral, PD is just jabbering away. So what's going on outside? We haven't we haven't gotten visitors in forever. What can you tell us? Oh, right. those are nice guns you got there, lady. They match. Oh, that's so cool. This is uh. Well, and- you got a tomahawk there, Mister. A real tomahawk? Yep. It is trusty. Oh, what's this horse's name? She's so pretty. Every time you start to respond, he just interrupts and goes on a new line of thinking the whole way there. You never actually get to respond with anything. He's talking. Till finally, Oscar, with his twisted neck, spits on the kid. Hits him on the back of the head. Ah, oh, come on, Oscar. I was just talking. Yeah, you're talking enough now. All right, all right. And Sula is like, you know, kind of half heartedly uh, kind of re- responding to him. She is, and I don't know how stealthy she's going to be about this, but she's, uh, her head is on a swivel. She is uh, taking in whatever sights can be taken in in this little journey. Give me an observation. And uh, what specifically do you want to focus on? Are you trying to like get the layout of the area? So yeah. you're just watching what? Um, yeah, I mean, definitely geographical layout. And then if possible, depending on how well I do, um, guard posts where people seem to be. Um, I have, you said we can spend up to two at once? Or two we can audience spend dice many? at a time, yes. Okay, we're out of audience. So this is personal. I've got five personal. Oh, personal? You can spend as many as you want. All right. Uh, I will spend three of the five to make this an 88. Um, And I rolled a 47. 47. All right. So you got an extra four back. Uh, And you said specifically you want to know, like, the layout of the land, guards, the the tactics. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Uh. You're going to be watching uh, one of the uh, cowboys that brought you in uh, rode out as soon as you uh, got in, presumably to go back to a lookout. Uh, there's only one ridge, uh, one valley that comes into this area, and there's a ridge that overlooks it. That's where you first saw the horseman a while ago. So presumably they're going back out that way. You also see that there's a couple guards just milling around. Whether they're normally there or not, you really don't know. They could be here because of you guys. But there's one by uh, the fenced gate that leads to the property. And then there's another one that's just hanging out in the loft of one of the barns with a rather large-looking rifle. As for everyone else around here, there's probably 15 to 20 hands. Some of them armed. Some of them seem to be a little bit more farmer-like but a lot of them are very rough and tumble. You guys are taking your horses. Uh, PD, after uh, getting spit on by Oscar, moves to the other side of Yusula, so he's further from Oscar. He gives me a hard time, but I'm going to be like them one day. I'm going to be riding a horse and shooting a gun. After a <clears throat> after witnessing uh, Oscar spit on this kid's head, John's face turns a little um, sour for a moment, but he fixes it pretty quickly. And he looks at Oscar and goes, you must be real good at watching your own back, huh? What are you trying to say? I'm just saying you seem like you're pretty aware of things on all sides. You have a keen eye, so to speak. Nothing gets by you, does it? Especially on that side. Point to whatever side his head is turned towards. 
anyway, uh, what type of what type of ranch this is here? Uh, I, got a lot of I want an expression check from you. Uh, we're gonna say expression or personality check. I'm I'm gonna say expression, but you might be able to convince me on something else. Got you it. see that he his eyes just bulge and light up so you need a way to either uh calm him down or brush past it without him drawing on you because like you can tell that he his hand tensed up it it moved to his uh holster you either need to find a way to calm him down or you might have a fight on your hands here i actually egg him on i'm like oh come on you ain't gotta draw we can sell this with our fists i'd hate to kill someone uh hand who's been so hospitable to me and i i will try to convince him to use uh his hands instead of a gun uh and you said right, so you're two. using convince then yep uh okay that is a i'm gonna use the one jack i have to increase it uh oh wait actually i should clarify this is it okay to increase it after a roll or technically no but i'll let you do it <laughs> okay uh well then that's a pass you needed uh, it to pass Yes, I did. Yeah. All right. From now Barely. on, you have to do it before. But cool yes, uh, it, this is our first session for some people, so it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, what did you actually roll? Uh, I just wanted him to not go for his gun and instead. No, I mean, uh, what number did you get? Oh, I had a 44. So barely. I, I, I if I had any more, four more, I would have failed. So his hand. Uh, he's got a cross holster, so his hand's across his torso, and it's resting uh, on the grip. And you see his hand tense on that pistol. And then he lets it go, and he turns his horse away. Esther, take care of them. And he starts trotting away. Okay. Uh, uh, can't take a joke, can he? Oscar and Esther were not actually doing anything to help you guys here. They were just... Uh, guiding you to the stables e esther stays and she stays on her horse as you two dismount uh you take the saddles off your horses and you you put them on the the saddle holder nearby uh pd comes out with uh brushes to uh groom the horses you, you get them uh uh on the the post nearby tied up to the post so that they're not going anywhere how far do you guys want to actually like maintain your horses here like, do you want to stay with them the entirety of the time, or are you going to go back to the house? I'm going to go back to the house. After they get put away, it's just... I'll do, like, a weird yeah. trick that's fake, because Bessie doesn't really need to be put away a certain way. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Petey will completely fall for that. Like, oh, I've never seen that happen before. Oh, yes. Yeah, it only, only works for me. She, can't, she doesn't... Yeah. No, don't I'll try that on all the other horses. I'll learn it. I'll learn yeah. it. Yep. Uh, you guys, uh, Sula, are, are you okay with, uh, your horse going into the corral too? Uh, yes. And so this is the, the exterior corral that we saw, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you took him to the barn that's next to the corral. Uh, Petey's like brushing him down. Uh, he, he got a couple oats for him. Uh, but then you're going to just put him in the corral and they're going to mingle with all the other horses. The horses are all branded. You're going to be able to find your horse again, but it's just so that they're not staying in stables or anything like that. They're not going to be tied up all night. Got it. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, Sula will take uh, her like saddlebags and whatnot. All right. So you grab your saddlebags. I assume you're leaving the saddle uh, mm -hmm. with the barn, like all the other saddles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so you got all your gear, John, you can grab your gear too. Uh, you're going to head back to the house. Uh, Purdy and Vint, I assume you two have just been uh, the same shooting the shit, just trying to like see where he stands this whole time. Is there anything else you'd like to ask him? You have a couple minutes before they arrive. Vint, you got anything? I got nothing. All right. Uh, it, it didn't take too long before uh, Rosanna call, comes out. And she's got a couple pitchers of lemonade and a tray with some glasses of ice. And she hands them to you. Oh, I thought we were going to have more guests. So I got too much ice. She's got four glasses there, and there's only uh, the... I'm sorry, she's got five glasses there, and there's only the three of you out. We do have uh, other uh, companions, madam. Uh, they are tending to their horses currently. 
Oh, that's nice. We just don't get enough guests out here, do we? Do we, little Lazarus? No, we don't, Rosanna. Well, this is just so nice having company. And here, we're about to celebrate our first child together. We're going to have company while we do it. Oh, my greatest congratulations to you, madam. Uh, birthing of a child is a wondrous event. Oh, yes, we're so excited. And I just, I can just tell it's going to be a boy. We're going to give him a good Christian name, aren't we, Lazarus? Yes, ma'am. Of course we are. Yeah. Of course, we haven't quite decided what it'll be. We're kind of leaning towards, I don't know, maybe Ezekiel. We could call him Little Zeke. What do you think of that, Reverend? Is uh, Did did Purdy already start drinking? Uh, uh, the lemonade? You could have taken the glass, but yeah. no, you didn't have to start At drinking. At that point, I think Purdy will kind of do one of those like almost a spit not quite a full spit take but definitely he'll swallow it down Mm. that's very very tart Uh, oh does it need more sugar oh no 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 i i prefer it this way thank you very much little zeke huh well i had an old uh old acquaintance named ezekiel yeah christian name indeed Well, yes, yes, it is. We're 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 thinking that it'll uh, be a fine name for our first son. Hmm. Well, if that is the one you have picked out, then, uh, then I think you should follow your heart. Try to get any sense. Why, Rosanna, I don't think he likes our name. Oh, it's not that I don't like that name. It's a, it's a wonderful name, in fact. It's just for me, I had a... I had a run in with a with a Zeke. We didn't call him Little Zeke. We called him Old Zeke. Well, hey, um, to put it to put it mildly, he harmed a very dear friend of mine and others as well. And you start getting dizzy here. Hmm. Well. Then you feel this too. A bit of lightheadedness coming over you. And at first, you think it's just you two. Then you realize that Rosanna is having something come over her as well. She spills the pitcher of lemonade and she goes, oh, what? And then she grabs her belly. Oh, oh, what's going on? Lazarus, is the baby coming? Is it now? No, no. And then a burst of blood splatters out on both Purdy and Vint as her dress erupts and two antlers burst out of her stomach. They're covered in blood. Bits of this floral dress are hanging from them. Her skin is hanging out. And then you see clawed hands reaching out, literally crawling out of her stomach. And the head is just the skull of a mule deer. No flesh on it whatsoever. But there's teeth, fanged teeth coming out and they're chittering what are you two doing step back draw my gun (laughs) what in the lord's name is happening uh purdy Purdy, what are you doing purdy will reach to his book hold it fierce and he will call down a word of judgment upon that which has emerged from the womb will say, I know not what that is, but that is no boy, that is no child, that is a creature of death and darkness, and it shall not continue into this world. Sula and John, you walk up to this porch, and you see Rosanna standing there calmly next to Lazarus, but Purdy is holding up his book, and sermonizing against her stomach, which is perfectly fine. There's no blood. It's just a fine floral dress saying that that is a child that's, this. what did you say, the the spawn of evil? Death and darkness, and it shall not continue into this world. Uh, Rosanna looks horrified right now. Father, what are, what are you, 
what are you going on about that? That poor woman there is she, well, I, she appears to be uh, far along in her weeks. And what, what are these words that you were saying is this poor, poor, poor pregnant woman. Purdy and Vint, uh, as soon as Sula speaks, you're kind of brought back. Uh, the lemonade never spilled. She's standing there next to Lazarus. He, whatever vision that was is gone as quick as it happened. The emotion of terror that filled you, it, it, it feels just as distant as that image. I realized that I dropped my gun, so I'll slowly pocket that back, a holster it back. I, sorry, I must be getting dizzy. I was the sun and my injuries must have been hallucinating. What, what, why? Why would you have drawn your gun on this woman? We offer you hospitality and this is how you respond. Uh, please, please, please forgive, forgive our friends here. It seems that the uh, encounter we had has taken more of a toll on them than we previously assumed. Uh, they mean no harm, I'm sure. Whatever they felt they saw is merely con is consequential of uh, experiences. Well, like I said, I guess that heat is just unbearable, isn't it? It is indeed, which is why we seek shelter. If you will still have us, uh, we, we would Love to stay, but I understand if we, we must go. I suppose shelter is where you should go. Y'all can stay in the bunkhouse, but I'll politely request that you don't leave after dark for our safety. Understandable. Uh, I suppose you're done with that lemonade. Y'all should be moving on. You can go on that way. And he points towards the, the dog truck cabin. I'll set my glass down and make my way towards it. Come on, yeah, Ernie, what are you doing? What was that, John? Uh, he just says, let's get you some water. Yeah. Maybe it'll help. Purdy will... Uh stare very long, like he'll overly long at the belly of uh, Little Miss Rose as everyone's kind of warning and talking. He will, in his mind, he sees uh, an Appalachian home filled with blood and a message scrawled on the wall, mocking him, teasing him. See the death of his, his mentor, and then he will look at Lazarus, doing some calculations in his head, trying to figure out which one of these is Zeke. And he will very calmly take a sip of his lemonade and place it back down. I beg your pardon, ma'am. Zeke is a lovely name. And then he will follow the rest of them. And that is where we will end tonight's session with the posse headed towards the dog truck cabin. Who knows what's going on here, but we know that Purdy's not making friends for once. Uh, good session tonight, guys. I had a <laughs> lot of fun. Uh, let's do some shout outs. Uh, Extel, what do you got going on that you'd like to talk about? Uh, hello, uh, I'm Extel. You can follow me on socials uh, at Extra the King. Uh, on Monday nights, I play a game on Talking XP. Uh, it's D and D Curse Strahd. I play a Tiefling named Arx. It's a great time. Um, Monday nights, seven thirty p.m. Pacific time. Uh, and then um, I'm the social media manager for Take Your Role, a PLC led platform that looks to. Uh, uplift marginalized voices in uh, in the TTRPG world. So, uh, if you can, you know, uh, take a let a look at us. We got some cool stuff coming up. So, yeah. And thank you so much for joining us. It's been a lot of fun playing with you. I look forward to seeing where this art go goes. Uh, John's going to be a, a fun character. Uh, Jeff, what's going on for Lolly Gaggers? Yeah, man. Uh, let's see. Friday, right here on this here channel, uh, we are back to Hunter the Reckoning. 
we are free of Stephen finally. Oh, thankfully. Uh, we're probably going to get another character or two coming back. Uh, and Long will be back, so that's great. We get to see... Uh, I don't know if Long, if you're aware of what went down the last time we played Hunter. No, I've not caught up yet. I tried to keep it stable for you, but I really failed. Some stuff has happened, buddy. <laughs> Some stuff has happened. Yeah. Uh, and then Saturday uh, during the afternoon, five uh, five Central, where we we are back to wondering. We've been we've been gone for for about a month, and we are we are back to our Waking of Angmar campaign. We are quite literally in Angmar uh, during the winter, so they're all going to die, uh, but it'll be fun. Uh, and then next Monday, we'll be back to Holler. Speaking of Appalachia, we're going to be playing Holler for Savage Worlds. Uh, and uh, in a couple weeks, get gear, we're gearing up for some Call of Cthulhu as well. So we already did like a one shot yesterday to kind of get our feet wet. We're going to be doing some, a lot of Call of Cthulhu on the channel over the next 17 years as uh, I've decided to run a ridiculously long campaign <laughs> because I'm dumb. Uh, yeah. I didn't want to say anything. but Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. I saw it, on, <laughs> saw it on your face. Yeah, I did. All right. And then, of course, uh, week from today, more Haunted West. Week from today, more Good, Mad, and Unholy. Mm-hmm. Uh, are are we going to be raiding someone? Uh, yeah, I think so. I was going to do Bert, but unfortunately, he just finished up. So we're going to go ahead and do some Dork Tales. So I'm going to go ahead and start that up right now. Uh, but, uh, thanks for everyone who hung out tonight. Thank you for everyone who threw out some bits. Uh, thank you for, uh, for all of that, for all the help. Uh, follow the raid. Enjoy some more TTRPG goodness on the Tuesday night, and we will uh, see you, well, next time. So, bye bye. Thanks, y'all. Bye. See you.